Hey everyone, this is Ryan, and in today's video, we're going to be answering the question, what is Polkadot? And we're going to be doing it in a way that's easy to understand, quick, simple, and perfect for beginners. So by the end of this video, hopefully you'll understand exactly what Polkadot is, what they're trying to achieve, the main problems that they're trying to solve, and the benefits that the cryptocurrency and wider blockchain industry can expect to enjoy once Polkadot is up and running and live. And hopefully you also understand why so many promising altcoins are choosing to build on the Polkadot network instead of something like Ethereum, Cardano, or the other uh, layer one options out there. So let's get into it. This is uh, Polkadot explained for beginners. Um, let's dive into Polkadot right now and uh, see what it's all about. Okay, so here we are on the main Polkadot website. And the first thing to know is that Polkadot is a layer one, okay? So what does that mean? Well, it means that it is its own blockchain built from scratch from the ground up. It's not built on top of anything else. So it's not built on top of Ethereum or Cosmos or um, you know Cardano or, or whatever. It's completely brand new. Okay. Now, and the reason for that is it's trying to solve um, you know a lot of issues with some of these other chains, which we'll which we'll get into in in a minute. Now, Polkadot is essentially a um, an ecosystem of connected uh, blockchains that share the same security and the same benefits of being in the in the Polkadot ecosystem, okay? And um, this this uh, short sentence here um, really kind of crystallized it pretty well, um, in my opinion. So Polkadot may be considered equivalent to a set of independent chains, for example, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, some other coin and Bitcoin, except that they'd have pooled security and um, they will be able to transact and communicate with each other out of the box, okay? So if you just imagine that all the chains out there um, or a group of chains, um, basically pulled their security together, so kind of strength in numbers. They're much more secure than they would be on, on their own. And they're just all able to talk to each other, transact with each other, you know, send information, send transactions. If that was just the norm, um, obviously we'd be way further ahead than we are right now in, in blockchain. And that is what the Polkadot ecosystem is, um, is looking to, to achieve for anyone that, that comes into um, into the network, okay? So we're gonna have a look at um, some of the main benefits and USPs and um, why people would wanna be part of, of this ecosystem. Um, so first of all, true interoperability. Like we've already said, um, Polkadot want everybody that they're involved with to be able to transact and communicate with each other in a very simple kind of plug and play out of the box way. OK, um, scalability is, is a huge one. So obviously we all know the issues with Ethereum scaling. Polkadot is designed, you know, one of the reasons it was designed from scratch from the ground up is because they wanted it to be able to scale to an infinite level um, without uh, transaction speeds and costs um, kind of increasing to the levels that we're, we're seeing on um, Ethereum. So it's designed to be very, very scalable from, from day one. OK, um, it's designed for, for innovation. So it's built on um, where it's built with the substrate framework, um, which basically means that um, anybody can come in and build their own blockchain that will connect into Polkadot and just automatically work with everything else in the ecosystem in a fairly simple way. Um, and you can just basically plug and play. And if you're in the ecosystem, you get all of these benefits um, by building on, on the substrate um, on the substrate framework. So it makes it very easy for new players to come in and um, just kind of add their, their value to, um, to the network, okay? If they've got the funds to do so, which we'll come on to a little bit later. Um, the, the upgrades and the um, you know, bug fixes and things like that, um, the, the network is designed to be future-proof um, and it says here forkless, okay? So it means that upgrades can be made without um, you know, the network having to be forked, without kind of huge uh, downtime that we sometimes see for major upgrades and, and that kind of thing. So that the network can be kept at the cutting edge, it can be updated, bugs can be fixed on the fly um, without kind of having a, a big effect on the ecosystem and all of the, um, the different blockchains that are in the, in the ecosystem, okay? Um, security is, is a huge one. Um, basically, the way that they've set up these chains is that the security is pulled, okay? So um, all of the chains basically um, share security. Um, so it's kind of like a strength in numbers kind of thing, meaning that the entire ecosystem, because everybody is contributing to security, the entire ecosystem and everybody in it is a lot more secure than they would be if they were a single blockchain kind of out on their own doing their own thing and, and doing their security. Okay, so everybody in the ecosystem benefits from, from shared security. 
And then on the governance side, this is all community controlled. So the token holders, people who hold the DOT token, which we'll get into a little bit later, um, they are the ones that make the decisions. Obviously, the more tokens you have, the more weight and more power you have and, and things like that. So it's fairly democratic, kind of the way that we, we would like it to be. Um, and the, the community basically decides everything and where the project is going to go in um, in the future. OK, so now we're going to have a look at um, a little bit of, you know, how this all works, um, the moving parts and um, a, a few terms that you need to understand before we have a look at some demos and, and things like that. So um, you might have uh, you might be familiar if you've been looking into Polkadot with some of these terms that they kind of get thrown around a lot, the relay chain, the power chains, the power chain auction, auctions, bridges and things like that can be kind of confusing. Um, you know, it's I can understand if you, you kind of look at this and think, I don't really know what these pieces are, how they, you know, what does this all mean, basically. So you want to kind of be very clear on, on that. So let's start with the relay chain. So as it says here, the relay chain is the heart of Polkadot. OK, so there's one relay chain. It's in the middle. It connects everything and everything is connected to it. OK, so it's the heart of Polkadot and it's responsible for the shared security that everybody in the network benefits from um, consensus and is um, also responsible for ensuring the cross-chain interoperability, which again, everybody benefits from, okay? So there's one relay chain and everybody else in the ecosystem will then plug into that one relay chain and get all of the benefits and be able to talk to each other. Now they do that via what's called parachains, okay? So you might've heard parachains with um, people talking about the parachain auctions that are coming up this year, okay? So parachains are essentially their own blockchains that are um, built on the substrate framework that can plug directly into the Polkadot relay chain and therefore directly into the Polkadot ecosystem um, very kind of quickly and, and simply. And then anybody that has a parachain, so this would be like a certain altcoin. So all these Polkadot altcoins you hear about, they're trying to get parachains. So they would have their own blockchain within the Polkadot ecosystem that plugs into the main relay chain and gets all these benefits like scalability, security, and on all the rest of it that, that we just talked about, okay? Now these parachains can be designed to, um, you know, be specific to what the, the, the actual project that owns it is doing, and we'll, we'll get onto that in, in a second. Um, para threads, kind of a different version of a parachain for someone who maybe doesn't have the funds or doesn't need like a full parachain all, all the time. And then bridges, bridges are for connecting kind of legacy blockchains that are already existing um, that don't automatically plug into the Polkadot network. So the obvious ones are going to be Bitcoin and Ethereum. OK, like they're already doing their own thing. They're established, but other projects want to be able to interoperate with them. So the Polkadot relay chain will have a bridge um, that will allow any parachain in the Polkadot network to then be interoperable with Bitcoin, Ethereum or, or whatever. OK. Um, so let's have a look at how this might work in practice. So here um, in the middle, we have the Polkadot relay chain. OK, and if you remember, this is responsible for security, consensus and for um, ensuring interoperability for everybody in, in this network. OK, now you probably hear a lot about, you know, these Polkadot altcoins. Everyone's talking about which Polkadot altcoin is going to do well, and things like that. Which one's going to get a parachain in the auction? And the parachains, if you remember, um, that we just talked about, are basically independent blockchains um, that can be set up to do whatever the company needs. And they all plug into this main relay chain and get all the benefits. OK, so um, let's have a look. Which ones do I like? So let's say one is Robonomics. Let's say these guys get a parachain, which, you know, it's looking very likely. So XRT, Robonomics, they have a, a parachain, okay? Let's say um, Fala Network, another favorite. Looks like they're going to be good too. Um, let's say Chainx, um, PCX, I believe. That's another parachain. And let's just say um, Akala. I don't their token isn't out. I don't know what their symbol is. I guess it's like ACL or something. I don't know. Or ACA or something like that. So these are all different altcoins they're all doing their own they're all doing their own thing okay so you got xrt you know they're in um, you know robonix iot um, they're all all these projects are doing their own thing and they all have different requirements for what they need in a blockchain and they've basically built their own blockchains um, using substrate and that means that they can all plug into the main polkadot relay chain and get all of the benefits so these chains will all share security 
okay? Making them much more secure than if they were just out on their own. They can all interoperate with each other out of the box, okay? So because they're all um, built on substrate, they're all plugged into the same relay chain. Robonomics can ch um, talk to ChainX. Akala can talk to Fala Network. Just, they don't have to do anything extra. That, that just works, okay? So, you know, all of these people, as soon as they come into the network, they're providing benefits to... Um, to, to everybody else, okay? And all of these, um, remember these are these are individual blockchains, okay? So they're called parachains, but they're essentially individual blockchains that share the attributes of the overall um, Polkadot network. So they have their own token, okay? So we've got the, the XRT token, um, Fala Networks token, Chainx token, and, um, and Akala's token. So these are individual blockchains with their own tokens, with their own setup, their own functionality. They can be very, very different and do all kind of crazy things, okay? But they're all plugging into the relay chain and they're all sharing the, the benefits of that, okay? And they can all talk to each other. Um, and now anyone that new come, comes in, um, let's just say mystery, mystery kind of parachain auction winner, um, they come in and again, instantly, they can just interoperate and um, interact with all these people, share security, validate transactions and things like that. Okay, so let's now talk about the bridges. So here's Ethereum network, um, you know, Polkadot, um, the, the relay chain, if you remember, is responsible for interoperability. So the relay chain is gonna make sure that um, Ethereum is um, interoperable with, with Polkadot. And, you know, hopefully Bitcoin will be interoperable with, with Polkadot, okay? Now what this means is that when these bridges are um, up and running and functional, Anybody that comes in, any kind of altcoin that gets a parachain, um, connects it to the Polkadot relay chain, they are then going to be interoperable with Ethereum, with Bitcoin, just out of the box, okay? Because it's all taken care of by, by the relay chain, okay? So this new guy comes in and he's automatically um, you know, interoperable with, with Bitcoin and Ethereum. So that is how that works. Um, I hope this incredible drawing kind of makes that a bit easier to understand. Now, I want to spend the last section of this video, just a couple of minutes, talking about the DOT token and, um, you know, the role it plays within the Polkadot network, um, what it does, because I personally, for 2021 and beyond, am extremely bullish on the DOT token, and um, it's seen some really good price action uh, this year so far, and, you know, the use case isn't even really out yet. So, I am very, very excited about what this is going to do. Um, I've been accumulating dot for a while and we'll, we'll continue to do so i think it's going to be a really really successful blue chip crypto okay so the dot token is um the native token of the polka dot network it's not an erc20 or anything like that remember this is a layer one so um dot is uh dot is basically how how everything happens okay so there's basically three um use cases for for the dot token the first one we talked about is, is government uh, governance, okay? So obviously having a say in the future of the network, um, which way things go, uh, developments, what they do, what they don't do, and, and things like that. So you can obviously vote. I think most people are kind of used to that with, with different blockchains. Um, the, the second and third one, staking and bonding. This is what, in my opinion, is really gonna drive the price up and really make this thing um, incredibly valuable, okay? Um, we can see actually before we, we look at this, the price today is almost $40, um, $37.5 billion market cap. And like we said, most of the, the real use cases for these tokens aren't even out yet. Um, you can see the, um, the blue line is USD price. So since January, it's um, gone up, it's gone over you know, more than 4X. Oh, actually it was, oh wow, it's almost done an 8x this year so far, okay? So people are really, really getting excited about the, the future of, of this token. You can see that the orange line is its performance versus Bitcoin, so it's even outperforming Bitcoin at um, you know, an incredible rate, and it's currently market cap um, number five ranked on the, um, you know, the, the global rankings, okay? So let's go and um, have a look at you know, what the, the DOT token is gonna be doing outside of governments. So first is staking, okay? So, um, you know, you might be pretty familiar with this. Obviously, you stake your tokens, validate transactions, you get a staking reward. Um, currently, as of making this video, um, the staking rewards average about 10%, I believe, on, on Polkadot. Um, that's gonna change in the future, depending on, you know, how many tokens are staked and, and things like that. Um, 
but that is a, a pretty pretty attractive uh, pretty attractive rate, which is going to mean that a lot of tokens are um, locked up. Obviously, that secures the network. You delegate who you want to uh, stake your tokens with to a validator, and then you can basically earn a earn a passive income, um, which I've been doing in, in the Polkadot.js wallet. Um, definitely recommended if you are a a dot holder or looking to to get into to buying Polkadot. Now the second is bonding, and this takes a a little bit more explaining. Um, but I think this could really what what be uh, be what sets the, the price on fire for, for the Polkadot token. So what is bonding? Okay, so I've already talked about parachains just now. Now, you don't just add a parachain and say, oh, wake up one day and we're like, I want a parachain. That's not how it works. Parachains are expensive. The only way to get them is by either buying um, a huge amount of Polkadot tokens and basically locking them up for a period of up to two years to basically lease the um, the parachain slot, okay? Or you get other tokens, token holders to delegate their uh, DOT tokens to you um, so that you can get the, the slot using their, their tokens and that's what a lot of products projects are, are doing, okay? So the long and short of that is everybody's going to want a parachain. Um, parachains are essentially going through an auction process where you basically just bond as much dot as you can you lock up as much dot as you can for one year or two years and you know the the projects that lock up the most they get the parachain slots okay so there's no cap on what can be um, what can be locked up so there's a lot of uh, projects going for not many parachain slots at the start which to me means that a huge amount of dot is going to be purchased it's going to be locked up um, with the hope of, of these projects getting these parachain slots and when it is locked up It's going to be locked up for a while up to two years in in some cases. Okay, so Just to recap the only way to get a parachain slot is to um, is to bond dot tokens. Okay, so if we go back to our um, this, this kind of piece of I mean artwork really um, that I made earlier um, essentially, every one of these projects, they are going to have to somehow come up with a huge amount of DOT tokens in order to get these benefits and get these slots, okay? Um, and like I said, they can either purchase them themselves or they can, um, you know, get the community to lend them their DOT tokens, use those, and then give the community their own tokens in, in return as um, a kind of thank you for, for lending them the, the DOT tokens, okay? So... I think that later on this year, um, when this really starts to, to kick off, and you know these DOT tokens are really starting to be used for not only staking, which they are now, but also for the parachain lockups for, for the leases, um, a lot of companies trying to get a few slots here in, in the, um, the parachain auctions, okay? So that is one reason I'm super, super bullish on, on the Polkadot token. Obviously, look in, into it for yourself, do, do your own research. But um, that is basically what the, um, what the Polkadot token is is used for. And like I said, I am accumulating it. So hopefully um, that answers your questions about, you know, what is Polkadot? Um, hopefully that's that's really helpful helpful for you. Um, if you do like this video, I'll be making a lot more videos on the Polkadot um, ecosystem, different Polkadot altcoins, because there's so many good ones that I want to cover and that I'm researching. So um, like this video, subscribe to the channel, um, leave a comment below, and I'll do my best to put out as much good quality dot co uh, content as I can, um, especially around different dot altcoins, because I'm super, super excited about the entire ecosystem. Um, so that's it for now. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Leave me a comment. Ask any questions that you have about Polkadot. And I will see you next time. Thanks.